you know, Key, these guys are like family to us over the last couple years. We've been very fortunate to know them. And Keith always around, coming to games. Brandon's like a right hand out there on the field. He's even helping me coach a little bit there in the games. Right? Taking photos and just being a part of it. And we absolutely uh, love it. And Brandon's got a message he'd like to share with you guys today. So let's give him our fullest attention and listen to what he's got to say. All you, buddy. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for letting me have a picture. Um, I'm just going to tell you about my story a little bit and hopefully share a couple of tools that you guys will be able to use in your, in your future. Um, I grew up in Mexico. I don't know if all you knew that, but my parents were missionaries, so I went there when I was eight years old. First day of soccer when I got there. It wasn't until 94, uh, to the World Cup, uh, until the Italy that I started to really play. And I played every single day. And this was my bread and butter every day at 4 o'clock. This guy's out in the front of the house playing 2v2. Just having a blast. And uh, I just fell in love with the game and got upset. Uh, I played for my high school, my being a tough break. Yes, my left. coach was a giant. Our left. Yeah. Good. Yes, thank you. There you go. Still learning. Uh, I played midfield and forward, and we didn't win in all the games, but we had, we had a great time playing, and uh, I'm still good friends with a bunch of those guys. And, uh, that's a horrible shot, but that's me in action there. When I came back to the States to go to college, I played at uh, Rose State College and NSU and Talpa. I played with first Charlie Mitchell. Pretty big name around here. And then I played a bunch of like just little tournaments and a little tournament in the morning. And then on the during the summers I'd go out to the East Coast to take photos of families, couples, groups, and I'll um, Pretty much a giant clown, and everyone on the beach loved me. I was like the high five king. Surf and all that fun stuff. And then that, that uh, winter, I stayed around and managed a Colson Creamery, an ice cream shop. Usually I come back to, the, to Oklahoma to go to college, but that winter I stayed out there. Uh, one night I was going home from work, it was around midnight. And the next thing I know, I see these long lights on what looked like a ceiling going by. And I was really confused. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Like something was out of place. And then I realized there were people with doctor's masks leaning over me. And they said, Brandon, you've been in the car. So that's when the light went off. And I was like, oh, that's what's going on. And uh, they pulled me into surgery. And what had happened was I was stopped at a red light, and this guy was paranoid, schizophrenic, he was hallucinating, and he ran into my car going between 60 and 80 miles an hour. And as you can see, this completely crushed the car. The, one of my best friends was talking to the doctor, and uh, actually, we'll get that. The first thing my parents saw when they got to the hospital there here in Oklahoma, um, that was the first thing they saw. I was in a drug-induced coma. Um, it had broken my back in three different places. And that top bone is what uh, damaged my spinal cord. It didn't completely sever it, so I still have some movement. But um, the doc I remember the doctors coming in and saying, Brandon, there's a 95% chance that you're never going to walk again. And that meant I would never play soccer again. And that was the hardest day of my life. I'm not trying not to cry. But um, I had to make a decision that day that I could either let that destroy me or I could fight. And the same tenacity that I used on the field, practice, hours and hours and hours. I applied that towards 
my heart and started doing <laughs> you obviously didn't let, let that affect the rest of your game because holy cow, you made up for it, you know? But it had you kept holding on to that and you were better in your game. And there's so many things in life that those sticks that we carry around start to add up. We start to let it go. You get a yellow card, that's complete bullcrap. You didn't even touch the guy. Are you going to let that 
carry through the entire rest of your performance for that game, yeah, the rest going to make bad decisions. The rest of this conference is sure going to make a lot of them. But you get to control your attitude to how you respond to that. Um, I brought you guys a little bit. Coach Mitch, I'm sorry, I forgot to include you guys in this. I got everyone to pass the bill. I got everyone a photo of the day I'll beat St. Edward. That was awesome. And I want you guys to all write on the back of your picture one phrase or one word. Like I wrote strength and honor on my crutch. I want you to write something that just you say to yourself that keeps you going. Believe. Keep fighting. Brandon is a rock star. I don't care. You know. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. You have no idea what it means to me. <coughs> story, right? And obviously we can all take something away from it, so hopefully you, uh, you take it to heart, um, because we are very fortunate each and every day for what God has given us and, and the opportunities that we have, and we should never take that for granted. And I think he's a, he's a living testament to that for sure. And it's, a, it's amazing what little things in our life that we allow to affect us, we all do. And if anybody has a right to, to get down or, or be upset about things or, uh, you know, let it get to him, it would be Brandon. And it's pretty obvious that he knows how to handle it. And uh, true testament to all of us, man. Thank you. Thank you again. Always family. Always family. You guys ready?